Hello everyone. Welcome to Amateur Decorating Like a Pro. I am Catherine. All right, guys, I purchased these two chairs from a hotel furniture liquidation store. Got two of them for $75. I remember that day. I was so happy. Now, I have no idea what I was doing back then. You can see the leaves in this chair flowing toward me in that diamond formation. And in this one, they're flowing away from me. Yep, you want to watch that grain line. I'm still learning as I go, guys, but I want to encourage you guys to get to work as well. So let's go to work. I'm going to go ahead and put on my little work gloves. Definitely don't want to get any scratches because sometimes I might run across a staple or two that may um, cause a little damage. So I've started to pull this off. So I think I can just pull. Now, the first time that I reupholstered these chairs, I used a heavy duty stapler, the kind where you have to squeeze the handle. In other words, the staples were barely inserted in the chair. I was on a budget and I had just purchased my first home. Now here's something else that I was excited about. I was able to get accurate measurements from the pieces of fabric that I took off of the chairs. It helps if you can get whole pieces to get these measurements. But if you cannot, then basically measure your seat and the back or the sides of your chair to get the measurement. Now I am constantly moving my chair on its side and on its back. It's much easier for me with the pliers in my hand to pull downward than it is to pull upward. It certainly helps me with avoiding injuries and strain on my wrist. Now let's remove any nails or staples. Now after my quick removal of the fabric, I did a thorough inspection of the chair. So I decided to use some wood filler to fill up all of those old staple holes in the chair. This one I got from Walmart. Now I am using a plastic knife to apply it. It's just perfect for fitting right inside this little groove. And then after you've applied it, just wait a couple of hours for it to dry. Then come back and lightly sand the area. Now this nail file has a 100 and a 180 grit for sanding and it's perfect for this narrow space. Now word of caution, be sure to keep your workspace nice and clean when you're doing upholstery. You never know where staples or nails could be embedded and cause scratches to your new fabric or even to the furniture itself. Make sure you keep a small trash can close by so when you are working with staples that you can go ahead and immediately dispose of them in the trash can. Now, with the exception of some of the dye from the other fabric fading onto the batting, everything is in excellent condition. The structure of the chair, the foam, the old batting, everything looks great. So minimal purchases on my part. I love that idea. Now, I had heard of these synthetic brushes at Walmart, and guys, I am so glad that I tried them out. They were $2.47 for a set of three. And along with my chalk paint recipe, hey, I got great results. Now, a couple of years ago, I had an opportunity to speak with someone who did upholstery professionally. And I asked the question, do you guys always use new foam, new batting, etc. every time you reupholster a piece for a client? And she said, what goes on behind closed doors stays behind closed doors. Now to make my homemade chalk paint, I'm using the Olympic Always Almond. You'll get the item number in the info box. Now I scheduled day two to be paint day. And that's all we're going to do today. I've got multiple coats of paint on these chairs until I'm satisfied with the finish. So now let's give ourselves a break. Now this is that Boss Bar Clear Protector. Just stir it up and lightly paint it onto your furniture. Today, let's just work on applying fabric to the back of the chairs. I love the design on this fabric and to make sure that it mirrored itself on the front and on the back, I placed the chair on top of the fabric and the fabric has the wrong side facing upward. And then I took a piece of chalk and I traced around the outside of the chair. You wanna make sure I have enough to fit into those edges. So it's best to trace around the outside. 
Now, I'm not sure what this design is called. I don't know if it's a fleur-de-lis in an elaborate state or not. I'm just not sure, but I know that I like it. So once I finish tracing the chair on top of the fabric, I removed the chair, just double checked and made sure that that medallion was in the center of the chair. Next, I made my very first cut and this will be the template for the other three. I placed my first cut on top of the very next section, lining up the design perfectly. They're mirror images of one another. And then I cut my second and third and fourth pieces. Now these are the same steps that I would take if I were making matching pillows. Now I decided that the larger leaf in the very center determined the direction that the fabric would be placed. In other words, that's the top of the fabric. Now I really wanted the fabric to be centered. So I placed dots in the center of the top and the bottom and in the center of the sides. I'm using these small little nails to nail in the fabric just before I begin to staple it. And I want to just do one more check to make sure that it is properly centered. Now the nails were removed as I was stapling the fabric. Now I've had my air compressor and stapler for about a year now and I was missing a part. So guys, I got that taken care of so I could expedite some things in this series. It took me 4 minutes and 25 seconds to staple this fabric to the back of the chair. Now this fabric is from Hobby Lobby. It is $34.99 a yard. I purchased a yard and a half and I got 40% off of that. So I spent basically $32 for the fabric. Now I trimmed down my fabric about maybe an inch and a half away from the stapled line. And then I applied a line of hot glue along my staple line. That way you do not see the hot glue from the other side. Now, even though I spent $5.36 for webbing, I did not use it. This fabric is already nice and tight and I feel it's secure. Now here is another opportunity to recycle. Remember the advice I received from a professional? Well, this is the original foam and batting. The foam is still almost an inch thick. Looks like that was the original thickness. So guys, I'm going to recycle it in the back of my new design. I place down the foam first and then added the batting on top of it. Then I take my fabric and made sure that the design on the fabric was facing the right direction. I tucked it underneath the foam. Now it's easy for me to tell that the fabric is centered because the design on this fabric lines perfectly up with the fabric on the back of the chair. So now all I have to do is tuck in a little napkin fold on the corner so now I can add my tacks. Now I get it, most people would rather have neutral furniture and have decorative pillows, but every now and then you might want to come outside of the box and do a printed fabric on your furniture. Now, even though my rubber mallet is close by, I like to use this tiny little hammer that my husband gave me. The good thing about it, guys, is I can just add a small piece of fabric on top of the nail head and just get it done with my tiny little hammer. And I don't leave any scratches with that little piece of fabric on top. Now, I did consider using the decorative nail head trim, but I changed my mind. One, it wasn't the finish that I wanted, and two, I just didn't like how they looked, at least not for this project. So I'll just keep them on reserve for something else. Now, several years ago, I purchased several bags of these on Amazon. And if I can find that information, I will link it in the information box. But they are pewter, the right finish and the right size. Now, I really don't want you guys to stress out about using beautiful 
printed fabric and if you have a chair that's made in a very unique way like the way the arms are on this chair if you'll notice I'm using pliers to get into a very small space and my favorite tiny little hammer and of course I'm using the fabric to cover up the nail as well as protect the chair you really should be using a mallet of course but that is the exception for me I cannot get that done uh, with the mallet it will probably leave marks on the chair or damage the fabric Well, it's about 9.15 p.m. and I'm going to stop for it today, I think. Having the back of the chairs completed is a major accomplishment. And then tomorrow, we will work on the seat cushions. Good night, everybody. So we begin our day by recycling the original foam. I did purchase additional foam for other projects. It's all over the garage, but this is really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and recycle it. It's about two inches thick, which was obviously the original measurement. And all I have to do is reinsert it, put the batting on top of it, and then add the new fabric. Now this is the original seat cushion fabric lying on top of the new fabric which is folded in half. I only needed to purchase one yard of new fabric to cover the seat cushions, both of them. And if you've ever worked with corduroy or velvet, they tell you to always cut it in the same direction or shall I say stitch it in the same direction. So you remember the mistake that I made at the beginning of the video with the leaves going in opposite directions. So I'm moving my hand along the fabric to check and see how it should flow. Well, I want it to flow downward, in other words, toward me on the seat cushion. So I'm labeling what's the front and what's the back of the the fabric. So when I lay it onto the chair, I'll be consistent in a direction with both of the chairs. Now this painter's tape didn't stick at all. So later on, you'll see that I wrote the letters B and F directly onto the fabric, very lightly, of course, so it doesn't come through the fabric. Like I mentioned earlier, this new piece of fabric is folded in half. So there's nothing I can do about the sides. I am gaining about an inch and a half on the sides, especially for stapling. And on the very front and on the back, I'll have an additional two inches. Now the cost of the fabric for the seat cushions is $17.99 a yard at Hobby Lobby. But I got 40% off the fabric, making it $10.79 for enough fabric to cover both of the seat cushions, only one yard. Now, I decided to update the batting in the seat cushions. So I went to Joanne Fabrics. You know how it is with a 50% off sale in home decor and upholstery. So guys, I got my batting for $4.99 for a yard and a half. That was enough for both of the seat cushions. Now, there are no heavy spray adhesives, guys. That wasn't in the original upholstery, and I'm continuing on with that legacy. I'm tucking that batting underneath just as it was when I first discovered how this chair was upholstered. And I'm staying away from the front band or the side bands of the chair because that's the area where I'm going to be stapling the actual fabric. Now this chair has three metal strips in the bottom of the seat cushion. So I have to be careful that the staple does not hit those metal strips or else it's just going to pop back out or either pop and hit something in the garage. So I later marked those with painter's tape and even a few dots on the fabric when I placed it on top of the seat cushion, just as a precaution. Now, I have come to understand the best way to get these things done is to do all of the same parts of your chairs at the same time, like work on seat cushions one day, work on the back of the chairs one day. That way, if you find a faster way of getting something done, then you can quickly move on to the next chair and do it 
and not forget the trick that you just learned. I place my fabric on the chair as if it was a tablecloth. You know, you make sure everything is centered. And then I placed a couple of staples in the front, in the back, and on the sides. So later on, I can remove those staples as I'm applying the fabric permanently. And once again, as a precaution, I'm using painter's tape to mark the location where those metal pieces are. So now I'm just beginning the process of stapling the fabric down across the back. And as you can see, my trusty pliers are right there with me. So I don't want any extra strain on my wrist. They help me to pull the fabric as needed. Now I wanted to show you this uh, so you'd be clear as to what direction I'm going in. This is the back of the chair. And yeah, I made some mistakes right there, guys. This is where that metal piece was that's why I had the tapes and I hit the mark so I did go across the back first and now I'm doing the side and that's all stapled so now I'm on the other side and I do the front dead last because then I'm gonna pull all of this fabric to the front and that way it'll get a nice sloping motion on the edge so that's why we're doing it this way guys now to wrap the fabric around the base of your armrest, whether it's on the back of the chair or the front of the chair, all you need to do is make two cuts into the fabric, just like I'm doing right here. And then take that small center piece. That's a piece that you can kind of cut a little bit off the bottom before you tuck it under and then just pull tightly both sides on the left and on the right. And it'll be nice and smooth. Now you don't have to do this, but I chose to build up this area around my armrest because the last time that I did the upholstery, duplicating what was there before, I found that there was a gap between the upholstery and the armrest, and I didn't want that to happen again. Now I can always go back and turn the chairs over in the living room and add the lining underneath, right there on the spot. So now the back and the sides of the chair, they're done. All I have to do now is the front. So I start to stretch the fabric toward the front using my trusty faithful pliers. And I begin stapling from the center toward the sides. I am loving the results guys. The corners and the front look really crisp and tailored if I say so myself, me and my amateur status. Well, this is great guys. The next step is to add another row of staples above this one and trim away the fabric. And by the way, adding that extra row of staples is optional. Now I love using the artist paint brushes to do my touch-ups. I just don't want to take the chance of having too much paint on a large brush and having drops of it follow my fabric. Using my tiny little hot glue gun, I applied the trim on top of the staples. And I must say, it looks really good guys. I purchased my trim from Hobby Lobby. I got two and a half yards for $3.13. Well, friends and family, I was blessed and happy to have these chairs when they looked like this. But now look at them. And I saved a lot of money by doing this myself. Now, I got an estimate on having these chairs done professionally. Well, it was $160 per chair, and that excluded the fabric, the nail heads, etc. So I'm thankful to have completed this with just using a paint sample and mixing it with some plaster of Paris to get the color that I wanted and putting the labor in it at my own pace. So guys, estimating around about $55 for fabric, batting, and of course recycling some old things that were in the chair, I'm pretty good to go. Hey, take a look at this awesome chair that I saw here on Pinterest. Looks like great minds think alike. Well, I hope you guys are working hard in your furniture transformations. Continue to send me photos. You are so encouraging to me to keep going with this series. Now check out the before and after of these nightstands. 
This picture was sent to me by one of my viewers, Jean Stair. You go girl, get those projects done and I love the metallic mixture. I love it from drab to fab. Now this series continues onward into the summer and I'm also going to include some DIYs in the very next video. I hope you are a subscriber. If you are not, please consider doing so today and remember to turn on your notifications. Thanks a lot for watching and as always, stay in prayer and stay creative.